So I've been a big fan of Huawei's MateBook X Pro over the past couple of generations because this ultra portable laptop packs some impressive tech despite its crazy thin and light design. But of course this kind of tech does come at a sphincter shred in price, £1,700 to be precise. Eesh. So who is the MateBook X Pro 2020 actually for and is it worth that massive wad of bank? Well I've been using it as my full time laptop for the past week or so and here's my in depth review and for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now first up, if you do already own a past generation of this laptop, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is the exact same machine. That sleek premium metal unibody of the older notebooks hasn't changed at all, and that's no bad thing by any means. Huawei has once again successfully delivered one of the slimmest and most lightweight laptop designs around. It's a strong rival for anything else out there, including the Asus Swift 5. It really is difficult to imagine how they could trim anything else out of this super lean beast. The 13-inch MateBook X Pro weighs just 1.33 kilos, so not only will it slip into quite compact backpacks and bags, you won't even feel it when you're carrying it about all day long. And yet despite that super skinny build, the MateBook X Pro is as tough as a sack of old bricks. That lid, for instance, super super skinny, but certainly tough enough to take some serious impact damage and protect the display inside. And you can quite happily just chuck it in any bag, bang it about the place all day long, no worries at all. No scratches or scuffs so far on that gorgeous surface, and the actual internal components are very well protected by that metal frame. And thankfully Huawei did decide to jazz up the colour options a bit for this 2020 model which is just as well because that space grey model, let's face it, it was a bit on the austere side. This emerald green effort is loads nicer and it helps the MateBook to stand out even more from rivals like the MacBook Air. And when it comes to the ports, no changes there either. You've still got a pair of Type-C USBs on the left edge, one of which is a Thunderbolt with display port compatibility, while a proper full-sized USB is somehow wadged onto that right edge still. An absolutely mind-boggling feat for sure. And I'm definitely still a fan of the MateBook X Pro's chiclet-style keyboard as well, which is super comfortable to type on all day long, despite the unfortunately shallow travel, which is kind of a necessary evil of ultra-portable laptops. Huawei has once again stretched it right across the chassis, making the most of the limited space so those keys are well sized and separated. And unlike on laptops from a certain other manufacturer, I've never had any kind of long term issues from a Huawei keyboard. These things are built to last. And as before, you get a respectable bit of backlighting as well. You've got a couple of different levels of brightness to cycle through and that definitely does the job when you're beavering away into the wee hours. And the MateBook X Pro once again has a Windows Hello compatible fingerprint sensor built right into that power button. And it's surprisingly responsive as well, even when your fingers are rather greasy from a bit of late night pork scratch and snackage. And once again, Huawei has amusingly squirreled away the webcam in that row of function keys to keep the screen bezels nice and skinny. The only problem being that on most desks, your Zoom companions will mostly just end up staring at your saggy neck fat, unless you prop up the MateBook on a few bucks. And Huawei has not fiddled with the MateBook X Pro's LTPS display for this 2020 model either, and that's definitely a good thing. That screen is a smidge under 14 inches, almost completely filling the insides of the lid, and it's a proper stunner. The 3000 by 2000 pixel resolution pumps out gorgeously crisp images packed with detail, and the 1700 by 1 contrast ratio is pleasingly sharp too. Some movies look absolutely stunning, and the MateBook is also ideal for photo editing. Creative users will also approve of the accurate colour reproduction too. The sRGB gamut isn't completely covered, but the 98% result is still strong, while 73% of the Adobe RGB is also supported. And I had absolutely no worries working on the Huawei MateBook X Pro outdoors either. The screen is rather reflective, but on maximum brightness it hits over 500 nits, so that really helps to counter any glare that you've got. And it's a touchscreen panel too, so you can completely bypass the spacious and actually pretty decent touchpad if you like. And no worries on the audio front either. While quite a lot of ultra portables bury away their speakers underneath the laptop somewhere, here on the Huawei MateBook X Pro they're actually housed either side of the keyboard. As you can see they're two stereo speaker grills and they're actually surprisingly loud on that top volume as well. Certainly loud enough to comfortably watch some Netflix or whatever in a noisy room and the sound quality is pretty damn decent too. But it's on the performance front where this 2020 model has really been jazzed up from the previous generation which used Intel's 8th generation chipsets. Now you've got the far fresher 10th gen Intel chipsets here in the MateBook X Pro 2020. Crammed inside is the Intel Core i7 1051OU processor helped along by a generous 16 gigs of RAM and this can cope with all manner of apps running side by side in Windows 10. I never saw any slowdown at all even with a butt ton of Chrome tabs open including media streaming and all kinds of shenanigans. 
wins, and for benchmark fans out there, Cinebench returned a fairly respectable score of 736. Not bad at all for an ultra portable of this caliber, although obviously Dawn Gore expected it to run some really, really beefy software. And as far as the solid state drive goes, well, you get a whopping one terabyte of size crammed in there somehow, and that's also rather nippy. Crystal Mark returned a read score of 3.5 gigabits per second and write scores of 3 gigabits per second as well, so it's definitely on par with other premium laptops. You also now get NVIDIA's GeForce MX250 GPU to handle the visuals, and this isn't as capable as the MX350 that's stuffed inside of Ace's latest Swift 5, but you'll still enjoy some fast and frantic action on any PC games that aren't too demanding. Earth Defense Force, for instance, played with a perfect frame rate, even with dozens of pissed off enemies on screen attacking me at once, and skyscrapers literally collapsing in a burning heap all around. And the Mitbox fans did an admirable job shunting out all of that hot air as well, although the laptop did start to get rather toasty after just half an hour of gaming, so you best not play for too long. And besides, stuff like this will just rot your mind. Go read a book or something. Similarly, photo editing was not a problem, and the MateBook X Pro even handled a bit of light video editing as well. Nothing too full on, but Wondershare ran absolutely fine. And if you want a laptop to basically last you a full working day as well, no worries there. Even when I was working in Chrome on lots of tabs, doing a bit of media streaming, and on full screen brightness as well, because most of it was spent outdoors, it was actually sunny in the UK in summer. I still managed to get a full seven hours of playtime, no problem whatsoever. Not the best result out there, admittedly, but definitely still pretty damn good. And if you happen to have yourself a premium Huawei smartphone from recent times like the P40 Pro, it's also worth mentioning that you can get a bit of Huawei share action on the go. Just tap your phone against the stickered area on the Mabug X Pro 2020 and the screen will pop up on the laptop so you can easily use your phone apps, share files and other fun shenanigans. And that right there is my review of the Huawei Mabug X Pro 2020 edition. So as you can see, if you've still got a working model from a year or two ago, still doing the job absolutely fine, there's no need to upgrade to this one. It is basically just the performance boost and that's the main upgrade. Anyone else who's looking for an ultra portable machine that's still actually pretty damn capable, it'll definitely do the job. But boy, is it pricey at 1000 700 pounds. If your cash won't stretch quite that far, then Asus Swift 5 can be had for a little bit less, although the display isn't quite as good. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell if you haven't already, and have yourselves a lovely weekend, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.